Good afternoon. You are now tuned in to the front line. This is all sports talk. Um, we will. I have some more, you know, graphics and stuff uh, coming soon. But uh, after watching last night's uh, bubble, uh, I was gonna call it a tournament because that's how people are treating it. But um, playoffs for the NBA championship, I only felt that it was necessary for myself because um, I love sports. I love talking about sports. And uh, I'm going to just create my own platform so I can talk about sports because I want to talk about sports the way I want to. And so um, I didn't watch all the games yesterday. Uh, I'm a 76ers fan. Let's just put that in the blue. You know, uh, let's just put that out in the open. That's what I'm going to do. Put that all out in the open. I'm a Sixers fan. I've uh, been a Sixers fan since 2000, at least once, since AI been to the finals. Um, I was born in 90. So, um, yeah, I was 11 years old. So I kind of know a little bit about everything that was going on at the time. If anybody wants questions, I can give you how AI um, didn't almost win, but he uh, stopped them from going, well, sweeping them, because they were sweeping everybody in the finals that year. So, anyways, so let's get to it. The Lakers and Blazers. Um, I knew going into this, you can't take the Blazers for granted. And um, I knew the Lakers or LeBron-led teams, they always take people for granted. They always take other teams for granted. No matter if it's game one, uh, game two, LeBron's excuse every single time, oh, it's a fill-out game. My thing is, uh, 17 years in the league, there's no there, there's no more fill out games. You're here to win. And somebody said, well, you know, he wants to make it interesting. That that time making stuff interesting, that was way before 17 years in. You ain't got time like that to be uh, trying to make things interesting and try to uh, make uh, the series longer because you will lose. And we know for a fact, and I have this in my notes, we'll talk about a little later, that when LeBron plays – a jump shooting team, he always loses. The and if you want any references, go back to look at um, the Cavaliers versus the Magic in um, I think that was '09 when the Magic went uh, to the finals against the Lakers, easiest uh, championship Kobe probably got. But yeah, he lost to a jump shooting team. Why? It's a lot of reasons why. But LeBron was a totally different uh, player back then, so it won't be. The same exact reasons, but some of the same reasons are still there, and we'll go into that. Um, but first, uh, I just want to talk about, let's just, if we all know the Lakers bench didn't come to play. Also, I think the coaching uh, didn't change um, by keeping KCP in the game. Was it the best strategy? First of all, you have uh, Deion Waiters on the bench, and you have J.R. Smith on the bench. Why bring them in? Why why not bring them in if KCP is gonna go one for only score one point and that's it for twenty nine minutes? Make that make sense? It doesn't. It doesn't. You have to be able to, to be able to adjust. And well, most people say, well, Dion and Jr. just got there. Well, guess what? If you look at the teams that played in this bubble tournament or playing games, the Lakers it looked like they weren't taking it seriously. They, they don't want to give away their defensive coverages. They don't want to give away their offensive plays. But guess what? When, it, when, when the fire happens and you get thrown in a fire and you ain't practiced in real life, you look like you looked last night. You look like an AA team, AAU team, a regular AAU team. LeBron is a liability, and I'm going to tell you why. Because he does a whole defense. If he's holding the ball on offense too long, he passes it just to get a two-point shot or just a, a catch and shoot. That does not work. It has not worked for LeBron's teams in the last four years. It hasn't, right? So when LeBron is not being aggressive, he's a liability because what? Nobody else is scoring. When he's not holding defense, he becomes a liability because guess what? His men shoot threes. And then I don't get why they double somebody going to the hole for a layup just for a kick out. This is the NBA where everybody can shoot. This ain't 1990. This ain't the early thousands. Everybody can shoot. From the center, from the coach, from the person on the bench. You put them in the game, they can shoot. And why not guard them? If you're if they're getting paid top dollar, meaning over $100,000 to play in the NBA, you need to guard them. Or sit your ass on the bench. Sit on the bench, right? Um, 
Dwight Howard, he was out the game from the beginning. His mental wasn't in the game. I don't know where it was. I think he was trying to establish a presence, but that's not how you do it. You cause too many fouls, too much, too much just commotion and just it was he was very irresponsible last night. He he's a liability mentally if he's not there. And also, he needs to play bigger. He needs to play like a center. He needs to be demanding, not for the ball, but just create the presence of Dwight Howard. Like, you are a big name, a big body, and, and apparently you matter. So act like it, right? Uh, Danny Green, I believe you won a championship last year. I don't. You're playing real stiff. I'm just going to say it like that. You look like you're playing real stiff. Like, your body is just real blocky. Everything's real blocky. I don't know what that is. Maybe you need to find out where to look on the bench to figure it out because you're not producing. You're not producing. And most people say, well, nobody holds defense for real. Okay, well, guess what? Everybody plays offense. What is he doing? Nothing. He's not – and, you know, shots go in, shots don't go in. But you're a liability and you're not making shots, so why not put J.R. Smith or Deion Waiters in the game, right? And I still don't understand – why they kept Jared Dudley. That's a whole nother conversation, but I still don't understand why they signed Derek, Jared Dudley when Amelo was out there. And now Amelo might be the reason why y'all get swept. One thing that I've noticed, uh, and just going back to just the way LeBron's team styles are catered, everything cannot be a perfect play. Everything cannot be a perfect shot. And when I see LeBron pass up on open shots just to get a, a better shot, um, it's not a better shot. And I kind of see what Skip Bayless, is, Skip Bayless says when he shines away from pressure. And, it's a, you know, making the, the best play is not always the best play. And, you know, I understand the criticism people have on LeBron and not allowing him or calling him the GOAT, and I'm – at that point where I can't call him the GOAT anymore because there's certain things that I see in other great players that he allows to happen. You know, and that's, that's, and I, and I think that right there is a, um, a deal break for me when it comes down to calling somebody the greatest ever, the greatest basketball player ever. Stats, to me, at LeBron's juncture where he's at, stats don't matter. Stats don't matter. It's about winning, and LeBron can't win, right? Um, this is something that always, and this is something that also pisses me off. You cannot go two for two for two, and this is just two pointers when everybody's shooting three for three for three and holding the ball for the whole shot clock just to get a two pointer. You can't do that. That is, that is not the way you can win in this day and age. You got to think about it. If and, Le, and LeBron's teams have been doing this in the past, they, I, I, which is I don't get. They think the two point matter, and it does matter. Let me not say that. But if you're not making the free throw, if you get fouled, or if you're not making the free throws when you get fouled, you just you didn't score. You are a liability. You're not doing anything productive for the team. And this is when analytics actually matter because if everybody likes the eye test. What the eye test tell, tells me, LeBron's a great player, right? Le, LeBron, he had 26, 17, and whatever. With, a, with an L. With an L. So it, the, it doesn't tell the true story of the game. It doesn't. But it gives you, and it, it gives you checkpoints to let people know what and what did not happen when this person was not in the game. And I was and I was watching the game with the sound on. Chris Weber said something. How how do you continue to get better if you're LeBron? That's what Chris Webber said. And, and there's plenty of ways. Take open shots that when you're open. Be aggressive. So Nobody should have to tell you to be aggressive. Like, 
if you're LeBron, the team is catered around you, including AD. If you don't score in the first quarter, you already messed up the team because the team's not really scoring unless you're assisting it. And what it shows me, LeBron doesn't trust his other teammates to be able to handle the ball and create other opportunities because LeBron should really be playing the three, attacking the hole, or shooting. He, the facilitating, I think that needs to be out of his arsenal. Like, he can get seven assists, that's cool. But he does not, the ball does not need to be in LeBron's hands anymore. Anymore. He just needs to play ball, and that's it. He doesn't need to be a point guard. He needs to play the three and dominate because I'm realizing the way the best teams are built are having two strong wing players. We can we can go, you know, you got Paul George, Kawhi. You got, obviously, Damian Lillard and C.J. McCullum. You got Klay Thompson and you got um, Steph Curry. You got... John Wall, and you got Bradley Beal. You got countless others. But LeBron's team teams always have an oversized at big man for some reason when the league's not big anymore. Um, and why I don't understand why they don't go get people that actually can be more effective from the wing. Wings are, players are the most important position on the floor because if you see the Rockets, how they play, um, they don't have any bigs, but they spread the floor out. And if you're not having any bigs, you split the floor, the ball can go around and it can be more fluid of how you can execute your this, your strategies and plays. I'm not saying that you don't need a big man at all. However, you don't need that many big men on your team at all. Um, and the last thing I'll say about the Lakers, I really think they're going to lose. LeBron has to prove to me this year um, that they, they can win. But I really think they'll they'll lose. And here's the reason. LeBron can't hit free throws in his 17th year. He went 0 for 2, and then AD goes 0 for 2. AD still hasn't proved anything. I'm sorry. He still has not proved anything. Um, last night, it didn't seem like he was a factor to me. Uh, LeBron really wasn't a factor to me either. Um but nobody else on the team was there to really do anything else either. So I think they came into last night game. I don't know. I don't think they were just prepared. And that's, as an NBA vet, I don't get that. How are you not prepared for a team like that? Uh, but the Blazers, uh, all I got to say for them after watching last night, I believe the shot's still going to go down. They proved that, that they are a shot-making team. So I'm not going to say, oh, they're not going to make as many shots. They're not going to do that. No, they are. They're going to be exactly who they are. They've been that way since they got into the bubble. And low-key, they've been, been that way before um, this whole season. You know, they're just dealing with a lot of injuries. But now everybody's healed, ready to play. Um, now they started making some crucial, uh, a few crucial mistakes down the uh down, um, I think it was the third, well, no, it was like the fourth quarter. They were only playing um, a few players in their rotation, and they started making, you know, uh, dumb fouls uh, because they were tired. Uh, you could tell that a lot of them were hunched over. And that's when I thought the Lakers may have, uh, uh, were about to pull it out when you could see the Blazers players were really tired. Um, but only the strong survive, I guess, you know. Um So I think the keys, if the Lakers want to win this series, I think the Blazers, Blazers just got to keep on coming through. Um, anybody can score on the team. Melo can get you 20 any night. Dane can get you 50 to 60 any night. McCullough can get you 25 to 30. I don't know what the Lakers can give you. I don't. LeBron don't even look like he can give you 30. That's a problem. That's a real problem. Uh, AD can get you your 30, but LeBron, I don't know what he's going to get you. I don't know what he's going to bring you on defense. I don't know what LeBron can bring. I don't. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. what? Because I don't know what happened to – he was – this is one thing I don't understand. All these NBA players post all these basketball videos, working out, shooting, doing all this whatever, right? But then when it's game time, 
Where's the between the leg, between the leg, behind the back, LeBron? I don't see it. I don't see it. So stop all the cap. Stop all the cap. And that's all I'm about to say about that. So I think if the Lakers do want to win, they got to limit um, the Blazers' possessions and get more offensive rebounds. And also, um, the Lakers have to start playing the part. They can, they just can't look it. Because to me, the Lakers have a, a team full of players who look good getting buckets. That's it. That's it. I have a lot of players that look good getting big buckets, but they make it only five to six points. It look good when they get it, but it, it doesn't have the same production of winning, right? Um, and I do think you cannot have – how can I say this? Um, I do think you only can play one position. I don't think you can – have dual jobs right now. I think LeBron needs to play the small forward. I think they need to figure out who can actually play the one, maybe Deion Waiters, um, and figure it out because LeBron can't do both positions because he doesn't do it well. He doesn't do it well. And that's and that's all I got on this take. Um, I will be doing some recaps on the other games on today, but today I had to drop this. I had to work. Uh, I had to get this one out. Um, I'm very uh, disgusted. Uh, I feel disrespected, and if I paid for that game, I would want my money back. Uh, the Lakers, uh, I'm not even a Lakers fan. I always hate, hated the Lakers since 2001, if, if you would have seen the beginning of the video why, because they beat Allen Iverson in 2001. Uh, but since LeBron decided to go there, um, I decided I would try to put some of my hate aside for them so he can get his fourth ring. However, I don't think he's hungry enough. I don't act, actually. I don't ever think he's hungry enough. I think in some situations he's re, he's definitely lucked up um, with winning some of those rings. And I'm not trying to hate, but LeBron has a lot of excuses, um, and he doesn't understand what urgency looks like and feels like. Because if he did, last night would have never happened. I don't care if you had to score 50 points. You got to win. Kobe would never have let that happen. Michael Jordan would never have let that happen. And LeBron has no pull-up game in 17 years. And that's what bothers me. He tries to finish at the hole every single time, but you can't. Sometimes you miss. Sometimes you get fouled. But if you get fouled, you go 0 for 2. You go 0 for 1. Or 0 for, and you make 1 out of 2. That's not productive. You're hurting the team because you can't make free throws. So you have to, you have to, you have to find a pull-up game. All those workout videos, we need that. We need that. Because I'm going to tell you this. If LeBron doesn't win this year, he's not winning next year. I can guarantee that. I'm not saying KD and them going to win, but I'm going to say this. LeBron will not be able to win next year. It's the, the league is going to a whole nother high next year. And I'm serious about that. LeBron is on his way out. His best chances, honestly, I think he would have been with the Spurs. But he didn't want to be coach. That's why. And, I, and I'm, I'm upset that I have to talk about LeBron like this. But I've seen LeBron play like this. And, I, and for you to be the leader of your team and to be the leader of the NBA, you looked bad. Yeah, you got your numbers. But those numbers don't matter. They don't matter. You lost. Y'all done traded your whole team just to play like this. I don't get that. You traded all your young talent just to play like this. Make that make sense. Make it make sense. That was a horrible game. I don't care what his, his numbers was. You have, at this type of juncture, you have to win. There's, nobody cares about if you score at that, you have to win. Bare minimum. And you can't come out and play like that. Because if you play like that, everybody else will look at you and they'll play the same. So, uh, thank y'all for listening to this take. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good day.